In today's video, I'm gonna go through a quick tutorial on how to make an auxiliary extended movable larger fence for the Rikon 3061 bandsaw using only a piece of plywood, MDF, whatever you want, your existing fence, as well as some T-bolts and T-knobs. This fence only has uh, two, a little under two and a half inches of height. So if you wanted to cut veneers, you just want more stability, it's not great. Now we can get that all the way up to wherever you want it. This is obviously slanted down. So if you want it further out, your height's gonna be more limited. But if you're cutting veneers and you want that full five inches, we can get that on here. So follow me through. This is gonna be really simple, really quick, and we'll get you a fence made. All right, so the moment of inspiration came when I was cleaning up this fence. And I remembered that this just slides off and we've got a metal brace along here that can go into T-Track. Now, if you wanna buy some T-Track, all you have to do is insert T-Track into a straight piece of MDF. This is the back of an old cabinet and you will be able to quite literally just slide this on there and have it go back and forth as you want. So if you're a person that buys T-Track or has some, that's literally all you need to do. But for those of us who don't and who need to make a T-Track system or some holes, we're going to use this bottom piece. We're going to unscrew these knobs. We're gonna remove this. And then I'm gonna use two quarter 20, three and a half inch T-bolts. They don't need to be this long and two knobs. And all we are gonna do is one of two ways, depending upon whether you have a router or not. If you have a router and you want this to be able to slide freely back and forth, we're going to route out a slot straight through here and then a little bit of a, a groove that's shallower for the T-bolt to go into and lock into. And that way it will be able to slide all the way. If you wanna just use a drill and a chisel, you can just drill holes where you would like it and then chisel out room for this bolt to sit right in there. Now, personally, I'm just going to do a slot into this so that I can move it back and forth, but I'm not gonna put a huge one in there. So the first thing we need to do is go to the bandsaw and decide how we want this set up size-wise, how far forward, how far back, and that'll give us an idea of where we need to put the slot. Okay, so you can see we can just use this lever on its own, and then the decision will be how high do you wanna make this? You're gonna to need to make it lower if you're gonna to wanna to go all the way to this end. You can go really high if you just wanna trim veneer. I'm just going to use this piece that I have because it's scrap left over, and it's just shy of five inches, which is fine for me. I've always wanted to toy around with veneer making, so this is kind of what this is going to be for. Now, I would like some extra on the entry and exit, so I'm gonna place it probably right here, a little more on the entry, and this piece is 24 inches long. So I'm gonna have, let's do six inches coming out that way and five coming out this way. Now, all we really need to do is make sure we get the positioning of this slot right. Turn this over. Don't change the settings on this at all. Make sure it's still how you have it squared up with your normal fence. And we're just gonna line it up and make a tick directly in the center of this hole. Make sure you hold this down flat and that will be our line that we are going to use. So now we'll take this over, we'll transfer that line and we'll get going with either cutting our slot, drilling our holes, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so just take your square and we're just gonna transfer this as we would any normal line. And I'll know that this is the dead center of where I want my hole to be drilled or router slot. Now the dead center of these holes are three and one eighths inches apart. So what I suggest doing is marking out those ahead of time. Now, if you're doing this by hand and not on a drill press, use a slightly bigger drill bit because if you're off a little bit, we're going to be referencing this off of the table anyways, so it can drop down a little bit and then we can tighten it. Uh, if you use just a quarter inch bit and you're a little too high or too low, you're gonna struggle to get it in the right spot so that it sits flat. So I'm just gonna mark exactly where I want my hole. I'm gonna be doing a router slot in mine, so I'm just using this 
as an example. And then I'm gonna mark three and one eighths inch over. Now, if you're confident in your drilling skills, you can just freehand this. Uh, you can buy those portable uh, drill guides to do a drill press. Normally, I would do this at the drill press. Or you can also just take a block of wood that you know has a 90 degree angle on it. That looks pretty close. And drill this way. I need to put a little punch right where I want that. And I like using brad points for these. <clears throat> it just makes it a lot easier to get right in that hole. And this will at least guide you this way. You're going to have to deal with left and right a little bit. There's one. And there's two. And we can immediately test fit this. So what we will be doing is, this is obviously an awkward shape, but since we're going to be cutting, if you, well, you can cut from either side if you want, but the blade will be over here. So we're putting this on the outside. We'll do the test before we cut the sunken in areas for the heads. These will be going on the outside. So then we'll go over to the table, lock down your uh, fence like this so that it's stable. You're gonna hold this up. Gonna need your two T-bolts or whatever you wanna use. You could just use nuts, wing nuts, whatever. And then get them both on, but leave them loose a little bit. And now hold this down to the table and tighten them. And there is your fence. Now we will go and chisel out the area for this. This is a, a nice stable, not going anywhere fence. And as you can see, we've got them on the back there. These sized handles do clear the table, but you may want to use some of the narrower ones. Okay, you will take it then, grab a T-bolt, hold it down, and just make a mark of the surrounding area. This can be a little oversized, but not too much, because when we tighten down, we want our bolt to lock onto the side. Now make it a little bigger, uh, in case you've made it a little inaccurate, but just trace that there. Position the next one. Just go around it a few times. And then we'll just get a chisel and we'll chisel that out. Now, the way I like to do this is to just go around and do the perimeter first. The most important dimension is the width here. Uh, that cannot be too big or else it will not lock. Better to go start a little under and then take away more later. You can also use the Dremel router bit or the Dremel router, plunge router, or normal router. We need to go the depth of this head plus a little bit. So we'll just start paring that back. By the time you're done with this, the bolt should sit in there. You should be able to screw your knob on. That bolt will not be able to turn and it will lock it in place really nicely. So there is your drilling method and how to use these T-bolts to lock it down. I have marked out, I've got my about six inches behind. So this will be the farthest back position I could go right there. Now, I don't think this needs to be super long unless you wanna be able to move this fence really far back and forth. I've gone about just a little under seven inches from there to there, which will give me you know, two, three inches or so of movement either way, as these are three and one eighths inch apart. That just allows me if I've got something super long, I can bring it two inches back. If it's for some other reason, I want the exit side further out, I can bring it all the way back here. Um, you know, play around with this. This is up to you. You could cut a slot a long ways here. You could cut multiple slots, which I think would be better for the structural integrity of whatever you're cutting. I don't really think one giant slot along this way is a good idea, but you could do that. Um, you may want to reinforce it somehow along the way. If you want a ton of movement, I would cut, you know, uh, four inches here, four inches here, and four inches here, leaving some connections in the middle, and that way you can move this and then get an inch of movement either way. It's up to you. If you use plywood, it's going to be stronger. If you use real wood, it's going to be much stronger. Um, a, a piece of hardwood would actually, if you can keep it flat, would be pretty good for this. So I'm gonna just route this out with my T-Track system and I'll show you how that works and hooks up. We're now going to route this slot and we've got the line directly down the center of our quarter inch holes. 
Now for the through cut, we're actually gonna make this more like 9, 30 seconds. We want a little bit of wiggle room on each side in case for whatever reason you ever change your fence or something happens and bumps it, whatever, that gives us a little room that if this needs to go up or down just a hair or if you measured wrong, you're okay. Now this is going to be my face side, but I'm going through from this side because there's gonna be some tear out probably, especially with this uh, veneered OSB. Now I'm just going to move in maybe a turn or so on this. Again, 930 seconds, somewhere around there. Uh, you want to leave yourself a little room. Okay, let's try it with a bolt. And we've got just a little bit of wiggle room back and forth. That's perfect. All right, now we are going to route out our groove. I like to grab a Sharpie, hold this pretty straight, and then just mark on either side. And we're going to want to eat away about a little under half of the Sharpie mark. And that will allow us to move this bolt freely, but that when it turns, it will lock itself in there. So you're going to want to eat away just a little under half of the Sharpie mark. But if you're worried you're going too far, stop. Uh, you, you have to get this right. You cannot overshoot this or you have to keep going deeper and deeper to try again. So test it along the way and make sure you haven't gone too far. For reference, these T-bolt heads are about an eighth of an inch. So, well, a little under an eighth, so like maybe three thirty seconds. So we're going to go about an eighth of an inch down in depth, maybe a little more than that. You want this bolt to definitely be below the surface so that nothing hits on it. You are also going to want to make sure you go with this groove further past. If it helps, set the bolt down at the end there and make a mark. But that will allow us to take our bolt all the way to the end. So you need to go past where your stopped line is. All right, once we've got the first side done, we'll go to the second side. And if we have to come back and make them a little bigger, we can do that. But it's best to undercut them at the beginning if you're going to not get it right anyways. All right, and that's what we are looking for. We can move it pretty easily, but it can only turn a little bit as it locks in there, which is perfect. Because the more you tighten this really hard, it can start to eat away at this a little bit. So the more... Uh, room it has to go, you'll get a long lasting out of it years and years and years. If you make this really wide and you over crank it too many times, it can then split through and then in that one specific spot, it won't be able to tighten. So don't make this too wide. Okay, to assemble this, we just need to take our lever mechanism. We take our uh, larger sacrificial, whatever you want to call it, fence. We're going to hold it up against there. We're going to take our bolts. We're going to find the first one. We'll slide that through. Now we're going to take the second one and slide that through. This is what you'll be looking at on the back and you will just take your knobs and screw this on and tighten them. If you have done this correctly this fence should move freely and you should be able to go anywhere you want as long as you haven't made the height under this and you haven't made the height taller than that. Um, let's just do a little test cut here as if we're resawing a, a thick veneer. And just like that, I've now got a veneer of cedar and my entire shop smells like cedar. So if you're thinking about doing veneers and you wanna not risk your metal fence, consider making one of these and just for any large boards or really long ones in general. The one downside of course is that you can't as easily reach around here to grab out and hold the log. That's gonna be up to you. But of course we made this fence so that it can move. So if you wanna bring it back further, you're free to do that. If you wanna go further forward, you're free to do that. And there we have it, our Rikon 3061 uh, Auxiliary Resaw Larger Fence. You can put it on, take it off in minutes, minute maybe, and put your other one back on and store this away as needed. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, other ideas, let me know, and thank you for watching.